super villains. Sad souls in costumes. Wanting you to think they're all dark and deep. What's it like? Living life as a punchline. But all it would take would be one blessed act of rebellion. For you to restore your dignity in its entirety. You know the deal. Complete the mission, you get 10 years off your sentence. You fail to follow my orders in any way, and I detonate the explosive device in the base of your skull. Love him or hate him, these are your brothers and sisters for the next few days. Any questions? And? Yes, that is your hand. Very good. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Oh, for God's sake. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. I thought you were the crazy one. I am. Whoa. Here's the deal. We failed the mission. You die. If we find out any information you give us is false, you die. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you die. What? No. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Suicide Squad trailer video. Even though it's April Fool's Day, they dropped a brand new trailer with a whole bunch of different footage, a whole bunch of new Easter eggs, and more of the team. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The other real big news, also not an April Fool's Day joke, is that DC canceled a couple of the movies that were in development. So I'll explain that at the end of the video too, because the movies that they canceled weren't really related to Suicide Squad stuff. There weren't going to be big crossovers with this franchise. The funny thing too is when James Gunn posted this, he actually said that I always hate it when they post a green band version of the trailer and it's the exact same trailer, so that's why he asked them to put all different footage in this. And he did make a bit of an April Fool's Day joke. He said, you know, even though it is April Fool's Day, the only joke are these characters. Just sort of hyping up the idea that the reason why he's using such obscure characters, such weird characters for this team, is because it goes with the entire idea that they're meant to be the most expendable people in the DC universe that Amanda Waller could find. Like, no one will care if you die. No one will come to your funeral. So if you do, it's no big deal. I'll just find other more obscure villains, put them on this team to deal with this problem that we can't get the real heroes to deal with. I do love the idea that they're using Starro for the main villain, and he was the classic original Justice League team-up villain, but the Justice League in the DCEU for some reason is too busy to come deal with Starro this time. The scene that they open on with them opening the back of the plane getting ready to jump out is very reminiscent of the same scene of the Justice League characters getting ready to jump out of the back of Batman's carrier, the big final fight in the Justice League Snyder Cut. Just to highlight the fact that we're going from the A-list superheroes in the DC universe to the D, E, and F-list superheroes. Like, not even obscure enough to be C-list. I do love Harley Quinn's jacket, though. It says, Live Fast, Die Clown, which is another Joker reference. There's another Joker reference in Peter Capaldi's voiceover dialogue, where if you had a hard time understanding him through his accent, most British people are like, what are you talking about? I can totally understand what he's saying. They didn't have captions on the official version of the trailer yet, so what he's saying is supervillains, sad souls in costumes, wanting you to think they're all dark and deep. What's it like? Living your life is a punchline. You have to imagine he's talking to them in a different scene. They're just mixing and matching this voiceover dialogue with this separate footage. But the funny thing about him referring to the characters as punchlines themselves is that they just introduced a new character in DC Comics called Punchline, and she's Joker's new assistant that replaced Harley Quinn. They have like their own rivalry between them, Harley Quinn versus Punchline. But I thought it was a nice coincidence the way they mixed and matched this footage of him joking about them being punchlines with Harley Quinn and her relationship with the Joker. Then he says, all it would take would be one act of rebellion to restore all of your dignity. So I'm guessing he's trying to taunt the Suicide Squad members into rebelling against Amanda Waller, which inadvertently, even if they're not really thinking about it, would get them killed because of the bombs implanted in their heads. And they literally juxtapose that dialogue right after this with Amanda Waller's speech, basically giving them the rules of the Suicide Squad. 
you complete the mission, you get 10 years knocked off your sentence at Bell Rev Prison. And if you go rogue, I detonate the bomb in your skull. Like she even opens up the briefcase with all the buttons that she can click. Some of this footage is from the last trailer, so I'll try to focus mostly on the brand new scenes. But a lot of the repeated footage is of them going up against Starro. There's some brand new footage of this beach assault. It seems like it's going to be one of the biggest action scenes of the movie, but hard to tell when it happens during the actual film. There's a bunch of new King Shark footage, this scene of him just looking inside this fish tank at all these aquatic creatures. These also seem like alien creatures as well, like this doesn't seem like anything you would find on planet Earth. And there are a lot of cosmic things that are happening during the movie, because we have Mon Gal, who's a cosmic character from the Superman comics, and obviously Starro is an intergalactic villain. We get some brand new footage introducing some of the more obscure members of the team, like this is Ratcatcher 2. Inside her cell, there's a picture of her with what seems like her father, who was probably the original version of Ratcatcher within the DCEU. But they use these scenes to sort of show you how she uses her powers to command all these rats. They also use her character to react to a lot of the crazier members of the team, like John Cena's Peacemaker character or Polka Dot Man. We get a slightly longer version of the John Ostrander cameo scene. If you're not familiar with him, he is the original creator of the Suicide Squad in the comics. So they gave him a Stan Lee style cameo during the film. He's the person or the doctor who's implanting all the bombs in their heads. James Gunn said he did that on purpose. Like who better to do this than the creator of the Suicide Squad? Love the scene of them going to pick up King Shark in his cell and he's trying to read the book, but he's reading it upside down. He's trying so hard. He's like a giant puppy dog or something like that. The way they're using him is actually very similar to the animated version of King Shark on that Harley Quinn TV show. If you have been watching the animated show, it's more of an R-rated comedic spin on the Batman comic book characters. So it seems like they're using him the same way in this movie as they used him on that series. Just a big dumb animal just trying to do his best. This briefcase scene is also a clever way of giving you another look at the roster, just identifying the characters. Just because they are so obscure, people are like, wait a minute, now who are these people again? I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of promos like this over the next couple of months where they keep repeating the characters' names on screen when they appear in the trailers just to remind you who they are. Most of you will probably notice, though, there's a lot of characters from the first Suicide Squad film. The funny thing is, is if you actually look at the official description and the breakdowns of the movie that the studio is given, the way they talk about it, this is the second version of the Suicide Squad, and the version from the first movie is meant to be the very first version ever in the DC Universe, like Amanda Waller's first attempt at putting a Suicide Squad together, even though the Suicide Squad team in the comics goes back to the 1980s. So the way they describe this version of the team is that it was a reformed version of the Suicide Squad that Amanda Waller puts together with new members adding to the ranks of people who didn't get killed off or get released from prison or escape to go down and raid a Nazi base in Cortol Maltese. The trailers haven't conveyed too much of what the actual story is in Cortol Maltese, just that they go there and they also have to deal with Starro and this other foreign dictator who seems like he's in control of the area. Or maybe he's just a proxy for Starro, because the way they reveal Starro in the trailer, like he just bursts up from that Nazi base, it seems like maybe he'd been hiding there for years. So it'll be funny to see the way they weave Starro, like this giant version of Starro, into the history of the DCEU as far as we know it, and all the films that we've seen so far. Like earlier in the timeline, was Starro hiding out here manipulating people while the events of Wonder Woman 1984 were playing out during the actual 1980s? And what is the connection between Starro and the Nazis, if this is a former Nazi base? We get more Captain Boomerang scenes. I wasn't really a huge fan of what they did with the character in the first Suicide Squad film, so it sounds like they're having a little bit more fun with him this time around. They also confirm my Nathan Fillion theory. He's called TDK, but that's not a name from the comics, but it sounds like it might stand for the detachable kid, because you literally see him detach his arms from his body. They give you more footage with the Weasel character. He's being played by Sean Gunn in a motion capture role. So it's sort of them doing the same thing they do with him in Rocket in the Marvel Universe, the Guardians of the Galaxy films, like Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. Most of you know Sean Gunn plays Kraglin. He's actually going to come back during Thor 4, Love and Thunder. We've actually seen pictures of him on set. He's got Yondu's fin now after the events of Avengers Endgame and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But while they're filming scenes with Rocket, he also does the motion capture for Rocket because Bradley Cooper does the voice, but he just comes in later after they film the footage to do the voiceover dialogue. The funny thing that James Gunn said about his character too, because people were asking him on Twitter, why is King Shark wearing pants and he's a shark, but Weasel isn't wearing any clothes? And James Gunn's response was, have you ever tried to put clothes on your cat before? I'm also curious to see how they explain the Mongal character and her presence here. Like, why is she being held captive in a prison? Is it because her father, Mongol, from the Superman comics doesn't care about her? Who captured her? Did Superman capture her because she is a Superman villain? 
they show you a little bit of her abilities during the trailer. Like she has enhanced strength and durability. Like she jumps up on that helicopter and takes it down just by herself. And the way they're pitching this too, like this is meant to be the full roster for Task Force X, the Suicide Squad. Notice that you don't see Peter Capaldi's thinker here. So it seems like at least part of their mission has something to do with his character. And then it spirals up into the big Starro plot. I have a feeling that it starts out as one thing and then turns into the Starro plot. Like the mission that Amanda Waller recruits them for is not Starro. It's something else happening in Cortol Maltese. And then it turns into the big Starro plot. And if you notice, the Thinker poster for Peter Capaldi's character they released has Starro's all over it. So it's just implying that he has some connection to the Starro character that they haven't revealed in these trailers yet. Like either he's trying to double cross them and he's working with Starro, or they're just trying to use him to help counteract the effects of Starro's psychic abilities so that they don't all get mind controlled. A lot of this footage of them running around in plain clothes like their street clothes reminds me of Pulp Fiction too. Like they all have their full blown comic book costumes that you see them in most of the trailer. But then in some of this footage, they're walking around in their street clothes. Like you see all this footage of them partying together one night. Maybe there's some attack that happens while they're out of costume in their plain clothes. So they have to roll in and they don't have time to put their costumes back on. They show you a little how Polka Dot Man's powers work. All the polka dots all over him can be turned into other things. So some of them can be turned into bombs. Some of them can be turned into projectiles. So that's what's happening when he's throwing them at these people here. The different colors turn into different weapons. And I love the way John Cena's character goes out with his dialogue too. Like, I love peace so much. I don't care how many people I have to kill to get it. But if you spotted any other new Easter eggs in the trailer footage here that I didn't mention during the video, just write them below in the comments. Most of the other stuff I already covered in my last big trailer video, so I'll link that at the end of this because it's all different footage. But just to explain the big announcement today about the DC movies that Warner Brothers just canceled. It's actually the New Gods movie that Ava DuVernay was doing with Tom King and the Aquaman spinoff movie about the trench. So it's actually not that big a deal. The trades like Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Deadline that are reporting the news say the New Gods movie was canceled because they didn't want a movie featuring Darkseid so soon after seeing the version of Darkseid in the Justice League Snyder Cut. Like for whatever reason, they felt like it was too soon to show you a different iteration of Darkseid. The funny thing about that is that we just got done seeing multiple versions of the Joker and we're probably going to see another version of the Joker in the Matt Reeves Batman trilogy at some point in the next couple of years. The whole thing with them canceling the Aquaman spinoff about the trench, the response from the studio was they felt like Aquaman 2 was all the Aquaman stuff that they needed going on in the future until we get to the next Justice League film. So I'm not too broken up about the trench news or the new gods news. I'm sure we'll see future versions of Darkseid once they spin up in more cosmic DC films. My next big video will be my Falcon and Winter Soldier episode 3 video. That'll post Friday. Then after that, I'll post my Godzilla vs. Kong breakdown video and Easter eggs. There's also a brand new Space Jam trailer that's going to be dropping this weekend. So I'll try to do a video for that too if I have time. While you wait for everything, click here for my Godzilla vs. Kong ending and end credit scene video. And click here for that other Suicide Squad trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. And I'll see you guys tonight.